Hello and welcome to another episode in our Challenging Flight series. If you're not familiar with Challenging Flights, this is where we do a flight with one or more aspects to challenge your piloting skills, be that the weather, the aircraft or the airport. In addition, we'll be providing the details of the flight so you can copy it if you want to. Hello and welcome to the Sim Hangar, the Sim Hangar for all things Flight Sim related. Today we're in prepared version 4.5 and we're in the Netherlands. Orbix is True Earth Netherlands HD to be exact, and we're at our departure point, which is Rotterdam, Echo Hotel, Romeo Delta. Let's get started. Today's challenge starts with the Bombardier Dash 8 Q400 from Majestic Software, perhaps and arguably the best turboprop out of all the flight sims available in the market at the moment. It's certainly a handful. Fly this right on approach or pay the consequences. We're pretty much loaded up with add-ons today. In addition to True Earth Netherlands HD, I also have EU England installed, again from Orbix. I have uninstalled True Earth Great Britain South as the hit on performance in Prepared is just too great and spoils the immersion for me. Also installed today we've got Worldwide Airports HD from Rex Simulations and the weather is through Active Sky for Prepared. We'll be setting up a bit of custom weather a little bit later on. To add a bit of ambience to the flight today we have GSX and the Level 2 expansion. The Level 2 expansion allows for animation of passengers boarding and deboarding. We're not alone in the skies today as we have Ultimate Traffic Live from Flight 1. This flight is suitable for X-Plane prepared and VR or non-VR. I normally do this in VR but I am recording in 2D as it's easier to watch. For our challenge today, after a standard departure, we're going to take the Dash 8 into London City. So what's challenging about that? Well, first of all, it's only 1,500 meter runway. It's in the Docklands, surrounded by water and close to the center of London. In addition, as it's in a built up area, it has a 5.5 degree angle of descent. If you'd like to see more from Simhanger, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell for future notifications. For planning the route, I've used Simbrief. I've put in the details, I'm going to be Flyby callsign Jersey today, and that's our route there, from Soneb 1 Bravo departure through to London City. The benefit of doing this is it gives me the fuels based on the parameters I put in, which allows me to put that into the Majestics control panel for maximum realism. I've put the flight plan into Active Sky, using live weather and let's just have a look. For London City we want to do the more difficult 09 approach but the wind is taking us to runway 27 so we're going to set up a small area of custom weather. I'm just going to change the wind direction as it's 09 so uh, something in the 84 should do. Click on next and then I'm going to leave more or less all the other parameters exactly as it is so it's close to realism as possible. What I will do is just reduce the area of coverage. I'm going to take it down to about 35 nautical miles should be great. There we are. Wind at 84 at 7 knots. The rest is live weather. Let's just have a look at that custom weather area. Let's just take the clouds and rain away. And there we can see the small area of custom weather that will allow us a 09 approach. Rotterdam, it's 210 at 20 knots. Fairly windy, but it means we're going to be departing runway 24, which is great because that's the Sonob 1 Bravo departure. So from our parking along taxiway Victor to runway 24. Welcome to the Majestic's business end. Really nice and very authentic cockpit. This is the Pro Edition of the Dash 8, so just about everything works. It's got a heads-up display, but 
we won't be using that today and let's get started first of all batteries on external power is already connected so external power on two green lights there that's correct just turn the windshield heating on to norm just to stop us fogging up and put our position lights on and do the fire test bank angle fire test is now completed let's just get a little bit of light on makes it easier to read the gauges AC on and air recirculation on make it comfortable for the passengers do our lights test and for our panel there we go that all looks good just cancel that caution light and that one and let's call in the catering services from GSX so our passengers can have a snack on what is a fairly short flight now turning both FMC's on and let's get the radios and navs booted up both sides there we go and now switching the display on the panel so we can see which doors are open and here comes lunch Now to get the cabin or passenger lights on, there we go, and then across to the side here and just open this, it just stops the windows from fogging up. The circuit breakers are active in the Pro Edition of the Majestic but we'll take it as checked and done. Now just checking we've got the oxygen with the green display. And let's check our emergency gear extension. Three lights green, that's good. To the FMC. Just stow the pins so that we can taxi. Up, oh, well that's timely. Catering has finished. Lunch is available. So it's now asking us to close the service doors, which we're now doing. Let's continue with our pre-flight checks, the ADC test 1, that looks right, and ADC test 2, and now the stick shaker or stall test 1 and 2. Emergency lights on. Let's now set our landing altitude as pressurization is automated in this aircraft. And here's our route from Rotterdam to Abned to Zeeman, and then from there we're going to be following a star through to an ILS approach runway 09. Let's now enter our route into the computer Rotterdam Echo Hotel Romeo Delta. Let's accept that. And our first waypoint was Abned. So we'll enter that. From Abneb we're going to be looking for an airway. Lima 980. There it is, number one. Accept that. And our exit point is Zaman, number four. And now we can enter in our destination, Echo Golf, Lima, Charlie, London City. Let's just have a quick review, that all looks correct. We've all already entered the weight and fuel information into the Majestic's control panel. We've got 58 passengers on board and we can now go to the fuel and enter the details. Passengers, 58. Our cargo is 986. 
and our fuel, our alternate, we can enter the value there. Our hold fuel, just in case we get put into a hold. And a little bit extra for safety. And then looking at our fuel there, 1325 per tank, so 2650 in total, gives us a gross weight of just under 27,000. Let's now listen to ATIS. Echo Hotel Romeo Delta Airport Information Delta 1025 Zulu Weather Wind 208 at 18 Gusting 228 Visibility 10,000 Sky Condition Few Clouds at 2,200 Temperature 17 Dew Point 12 QNH 1011 Advise on initial contact You have information Delta The wind has confirmed Runway 24 Departure Sommo 1B we can now enter that into our route. We go to menu, departures, it's number two, runway 24, and we're looking for Sawmill 1B, which is number six, and there we go, we've got it in the flight plan. Now doing our auto feather test, and it should come up on the panel, which it has, that's good. And it's time to call in the passengers for boarding. Checking all three trims. Now with the Majestic you do need a little bit of right rudder. So we're just going to click that into 6 or 7. Setting our squawk code. Time to set up the autopilot. Clicking on the small button on the side of the throttle. Let's select our altitude, which is 21,000 feet today, and put Alt Select. And we're going to set the heading to the runway heading. So around about 243 or thereabouts, and hit Heading. And we should have GA, Alt Select, and Heading. That's correct. Now time to set up our takeoff speeds. We saw earlier our takeoff mass was about 27, so we'll be using 28, so 130 and 132, 147 and 154. Let's now put those in. Our passengers have obviously felt the terminal was too far away and have been bussed in, and here they come. It's great having the animations, although some of the animations, right, some of the walking is not that great. That girl in red there is really working it. I find GSX really adds to the immersion. The feather test is complete, so we can turn that button off for now. We're now going to set our decision altitude at 1,000 feet and we can close the passenger doors and we're just waiting for the luggage to be loaded. Come on guys, let's get on with it. We want an on-time departure today. Setting both our nav sources to the FMS. Just checking the HSI is on the pilot side, which it is, and setting the yaw damper. Now time to put the warning light on at red. This indicates to ground crew that engines will be starting soon. Time to put on the APU as we'll be disconnecting the power there it goes through its self test click start a short wait for the gen to start and now we can start the APU and get the bleeds on baggage has been loaded we can close that door now so all doors are closed Switching the display to electrical, so we check that we've got power and we can now turn off the external power. 
There we go, we're running on the APU now. And we can ask the ground crew to disconnect the power through services and ask them to take it away. There we go. Now time to bring up the co-pilots FMC and we will cross fill the flight plan and the fuel data to the co-pilot side so in the event of a failure we have a fallback with all the data already entered. Switch control for the navs and the radios to the FMS and now time to start, starting engine 2 first. Just watch it spool up slightly before we feed in the fuel. And now we can feed in the fuel to engine number 2. And repeat the process for engine number 1. Bus tie off so it's drawing power from the engines and APU off. Grade tubes are located on both sides for flowing the additional air into the light bed. For more detailed information, please refer to the safety instruction card in a seat pocket. Flaps to five for takeoff. The Dash 8 can only use flaps five or fifteen. And our condition levers to max and we'll now hear those engines spool up. Great sound set on this aircraft. Window heat to norm and put the pitots on. That only leaves one light on the annunciator panel and that's brake so we're good for taxi. We've received clearance to taxi and we don't need pushback, we can taxi straight out from where we are. Final procedures now before taxi, feather on, both fuel pumps on and our hydraulics on. And we're going to do a quick test on pump number three in case of emergency. There we go, that's working fine. Parking brake is off, I'm holding it on the brakes manually, annunciator is clear and now doing the takeoff test, if anything's faulty it will beep, no, that's good and now putting the steering gimbal on.
Altimeter is uh, set. The squawk is now set to on and reporting. Landing lights on, taxi lights off, and we're ready to line up and depart. Spoiler is set to flight mode. Throttle inhibitor now removed. And let's power down and let's get going. Whoops, a little bit too fast on the throttle there. Keeping one eye at all times on the speed. 130 V1, 132 V2. Airspeed is alive. V1, V2 and rotate. I'm using the honeycomb yoke. Super responsive. Nice feeling of back pressure there. Gear up. Gear lights out. Manually flying the initial part of the departure before switching to autopilot. There's a noise restriction in place at Rotterdam, so coming back a little bit on the control levers. Autopilot on. Switching to nav and coming back on the throttles, again for noise. Also it's very easy to damage the turboprop engines. Typically you'd set the throttles to about 92-93% for takeoff. The Dash 8 has a service ceiling of about 25,000 feet and it can fly at around about 250 to 260 knots. The beauty of that is it can fly in the same airspace as a lot of the tube liners. For those short hops it's uh, economical to use the Dash 8. Coming up on 10,000 feet, so passenger signs off, landing lights off. I don't need the logo lights on at this time. Hmm, should have switched the aircon on a little bit sooner. Apologies to the passengers. Just checking that the altimeters are now set back to standard, which they are. And uh, feather can come off, fuel pumps can come off, as can the hydraulic standbys. The display is showing that ice is detected on the airframe, so time to put the ice protection on and we'll switch that to fast for now, see how we do. We're now at cruise, on our way to Abnid, and time to set up our approach. We're looking for the Zayman 1 Charlie arrival, and that will take us to Jacko, and we need to be at flight level 90. 
and then from there we want the odd leg one Juliet star into London City Let's now set up our arrival, go to menu and we're looking for arrival, runway 09 so it's 1 and we're looking for 1 Charlie that's 14 and then for the approach it's an ILS to runway 09 we want and the transition 1 Juliet that's 6 flight plan and we'll just check if there's any breaks any discontinuations yes there's one we'll delete that you can also set up your descents in the computer we'll just have a quick look at how to do this and it will initiate a descent although the throttle is manual we go to VNAV 2 we pick our point which is Jacko because we know we need to be at 9000 I'm going to put in three. I want to be three nautical miles before Jacko at 9,000 and a descent rate of 1,800 feet. It shows me the distance in nautical miles and a visual display, a circle on the computer display. We then set the altitude and I want 9,000 feet and once I've got 9,000 feet I hit ALT SELECT and hit VNAV when the purple indicator comes up there's VNAV and it will automatically start the descent I just have to be conscious that there is no auto throttle it's very easy to overspeed this has to be done manually We're now at top of descent and I'm having to pull back on the throttles almost to idle. I want to maintain a speed of not more than 240 knots on the way down. Starting to descend into the cloud cover, let's have a quick listen to Aters for London City Airport. Echo Gulf Lima Charlie Airport information Echo 1010 Zulu weather wind 083 at 7 visibility 10 sky clear temperature 82.3 QNH 1023 advice on initial contact you have information Echo The weather information is much as we set it up having a quick look we can see it's an ILS approach 111.15 into London City, runway 09. The key element of getting into London City with the Dash 8 is speed. If you're too fast, you're not going to get down in time. 1,500 feet is not a lot of runway when you're descending at 6 degrees. The Dash 8 does show damages and I have been known to burst a tyre and often a go around. We're now past Jacko at 9000 and need to set up our descent for the next stage. Using VNAV we're again going to set up a descent to Ravsa at 6000 feet. And again I'm going to choose to be at the altitude a little bit before, 3 nautical miles and I'm going to slow down my rate of descent from 1800 to 1500 as I'll be slowing down. I've already slowed from 240 to 220 and 180 at the next waypoint. As I'm below 10,000, landing lights on and passenger signs on.
now setting descent to Osvev at 3000 and again slowing my rate of descent down to 1000. Speed now slowing to 160. We will soon be entering the downward leg for our approach to London City runway 09. We've already set the nav radios to the ILS course 111.15 and now setting the course needle 93 degrees for the ILS approach. And we're about to start our descent to 3,000 feet, slowing to 150 knots. Once again pulling back on the throttles to control the airspeed. That's London City over there and it is definitely quite hazy at the moment. Turning now to what is effectively our downwind leg. Speed is well below uh, 200 knots so I can put in flaps 5 and I'm looking to slow to about 145 knots. Now to plan in our last descent and that will be to 2000 feet which is our approach altitude as well. That's now set. Gear down. And through the haze we're getting our first look at London City. I'm not far from being parallel to the airport at this time. Flaps 15 and slowing to 140 knots. Time now to set up my speeds and it's a flap 35 landing and I'm going to be at a weight of about just under 20 26,000 so it's 116 knots is my minimum approach and my landing speed. Preparations now underway for landing, condition levers to full. I'm 
going to switch away from the FMS and the route and fly by heading and then a manual switch on nav directly onto the ILS. Now on base and very shortly we'll be turning on to final. Most important aspect here in the Dash 8 is the speed so flap to full looking for between 125 and 130 knots. Now turning on to final and hitting the uh, approach button and now just turning on to final come on get round watching my airspeed and we have London City runway 09 in sight we have visual altitude looks good but I am a little way off to the left and need to correct but the ILS should do that for me the London Dome ahead their speeds okay but it's a little faster than what I would like it to do a little bit back on the throttles looks like the puppies are too white and too red which is just where I want it just about on the glide path on the ILS for runway 09 London City little bit low got to watch the airspeed I'm autopilot off and I'm gonna fly this in manually to land it which is a prerequisite with the dash 8. Four red meaning I'm too low but I should be able to correct for that no problem. One of the challenges of flying the dash 8 is that it gets a little bit sloppy and slow to react the slower you get. Looks like ultimate traffic lives left me a little bit of uh, traffic to deal with thank you very much. Altitude now correcting Bye. Coming in a little bit faster than what I would like to do but there's a bit of a wind here and I'm just going to have to just keep the throttles where they are. I'm going to be a little bit high but it shouldn't be too bad, shouldn't be too long a landing. Come on you beauty, get down, slight flare. Here we go, oh and we're down. Throttles to beta and reverse. Now manual braking, we're going to have to turn around and head back to the parking which is required when landing runway 09. That landing is so intense.
Wow, that Dash 8 is really a handful. I hope you found this useful and enjoyable. I'll see you all again very soon and bye for now. If you'd like to see more from Simhanger, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell for future notifications.